The Whitman mission was a defining moment in both Caillou's culture and the definition of manifest destiny. The events exhibit not only exploration west, but also the encounters and exchanges demonstrated when at the mission, working through cultural and religious differences. The Second Great Awakening was the time period in which religion was booming within the white settlers. Marcus Whitman, a minister in training, met and soon married his wife, Narcissa Prentice. The two applied for American Board of Commissioners for foreign missions and were accepted as missionaries to save natives out west. It was said that God saved the settlers who believed in Christianity and it was their responsibility to save others from going to hell. The Whitmans believed it was their duty to save the Cayuse people. Marcus and Narcissa met with Henry and Eliza Spalding and set off on a historic journey. It was a defining trip because the party was the first wagon train to cross the Oregon Trail. Along with that, Eliza and Narcissa were the first two women to cross America. Conflict arose early when it was uncovered that Henry and Narcissa were involved in a previous relationship which caused unnecessary hardships. The party had to overcome several obstacles such as crossing the Blue Mountain, the Rocky Mountains, and the Snake River. Other harsh encounters came from terrible weather and sickness. Luckily, the group was able to stop at many forts and native tribes where they were welcomed and could rest. Narcissa often wrote in her journal about how beautiful the mountains, flowers, rivers, and trees were. Once at Fort Vancouver, the Spaldings and Whitmans separated, and the Whitmans went to Walla Walla to help the Cayuse, while the Spaldings went out to the Nez Pierce in his what present day California. The mission began with Marcus and Narcissa Whitman traveling into the territory that once belonged to the Cayuse. The motives behind the Whitman mission were to convert the Cayuse to Christianity. The mission started off with the Cayuse accepting the Christian practices that were forced upon them. The tribe abided by the farming taught by Marcus, which replaced their ineffective, nomadic ways. The Cayuse's opinion on Christianity was that it was strenuous and useless. They also didn't like the idea of the white man's book, the Bible. Soon after learning the methods, the Cayuse took advantage of the Whitmans. Their planted crops were watered by a stolen stream intended for Marcus. Marcus was angered by this, and the tension only increased over time. Early on, there was an obvious cultural difference that enraged both parties. These everlasting encounters eventually led to the Whitmans' tragic and brutal murder. The Whitmans wanted the Cayuse to change everything within their culture, and most importantly, their spiritual practices. Chief Tillicate and his tribe didn't want to comply by the changes. Marcus was often threatened with death, and his unsympathetic rules were often why. This message was not clear to Marcus, so he kept attempting to change the natives' identity. The other part of the Cayuse culture the Whitmans wanted to change was their clothing. The Cayuse did not change to traditional white clothing, so the Whitmans prohibited anyone not wearing such clothes into the mission building to force a change. The tribe tried to earn compensation from the Whitmans and demanded payment for the land and resources. However, this proposition was quickly rejected by the missionaries and the Cayuse had to suffer the loss of their vital resources. Being missionaries was no easy task for Marcus and Narcissa. During their attempts at converting the Cayuse, they had a baby named Alice Clarissa. The daughter received plenty of love from both her mother and the Cayuse, but she drowned in a river at a young age. Narcissa entered a stage of deep depression. The Cayuse had previously accepted her as a Cayuse girl because she was born on Cayuse land. The loss was heartbreaking to both parties. The Cayuse believed in shared community space, but Narcissa required privacy for many reasons. One of these may have been Alice's death. The Cayuse found closed doors, fences, and such as rude. They believed that the missionaries were trying to eradicate them to take over their land. The final blow that tipped the scale and caused the massacre was when the emigrant wagon trains brought measles to the mission site. The Cayuse died every day from this deadly disease. To make things worse, some Cayuse, Joe Lewis and Jackie Finley, spread rumors that the Whitmans were intentionally giving them diseased blankets. This made Marcus appear as if he was using biological warfare to terminate the Cayuse. His attempts at curing the Cayuse were unsuccessful, so action seemed intentional. 
In Cayuse culture, if the shaman fails to cure the sick patients, the shaman may be put to death. This is exactly what the Cayuse did. Um, I think this type of incident, you know, what we today typically know as the Whitman Massacre, um, it's hard to necessarily apportion blame as one side was good and one side was evil. The massacre began on November 29th, 1847, when there was a freezing rain and thick fog all around that devoured the mission. A band of Cayuse warriors with concealed tomahawks and guns approached the mission building. Tillichid, the Cayuse chief who had lost his third son to measles the same morning, entered the sitting room and demanded medicine from Dr. Whitman. While they talked, another Cayuse named Tomahawks took out a tomahawk and hit Marcus with a blow to the back of the head. John Sager, one of the adopted Sager children, reached for a gun to retaliate, but was shot before he could reach one. The only other person in the room, Marianne Bridger, panicked and ran away. Then, the Cayuse dragged Marcus outside and shot him in the neck. Meanwhile, the killing outside was just beginning. Narcissa Whitman gathered the surrounding children to keep them safe. Mary Ann Bridger came to Narcissa, screaming that Marcus had been shot. Narcissa found Marcus in the mud and dragged him inside where he passed away. The group of attackers moved to the schoolhouse where they found some hidden children. Francis Sega was thrown to the ground and shot to death right in front of his sister Matilda. The rest were taken hostage. Some survivors were sheltered in the mission house for the night. Kimball, the man who was shot in the arm, exited the mission house and was shot as he went to the river for water on the following morning. The hostages were kept for a month. No women or children besides Narcissa were killed. The news of the massacre traveled quickly. Weeks after the Hudson's Bay Company ransomed the captors for guns, bullets, and tobacco. This would lead to the first full-scale Native American war. The Cayuse War lasted eight years. It was a relatively blood-free war, as there were only 13 casualties. When militiamen joined the fight, the Cayuse began to give up. They surrendered in April of 1850. In addition, they gave up five of their murderers. The Cayuse were put on trial, which began on May 23rd. All 12 jurors and the judge for the case were white men. The only witness for the Cayuse side was Chief Stickus. The trial was not in any way there. The Cayuse were sentenced to death by hanging. They were then hung in front of crowds by Marshal Joe Meek and buried in unmarked graves. Anson Dart, superintendent of Oregon Territory, proposed that the 256 remaining Cayuse and Walla Walla Indians be put on reservations. The Walla Walla Treaty Council was set up with the Cayuse and other tribes. They were urged to select a reservation quickly. Cayuse, Umatilla, and Walla Walla Indians ceded 4 million acres of land for $150,000 and a 512,000 acre reservation. Only 160,000 acres remained in 1930. Nowadays, the tribes have a resort and thriving business. The massacre also expanded federal control over the Pacific Northwest. It also caused many whites to leave the West. The bonds between the settlers and natives were broken. After the war, the mission site was fully burned down, and 20 years later, the Catholic missionaries took over. Threats to other Indian communities like the Cayuse. So the Cayuse are learning, well, these, no these, these outsiders, these newcomers who are stealing our land, also have a proclivity to violence. So they're already kind of on their guard when they start, you know, interacting with non-native peoples who are pouring into this region. Cayuse believed that the only option they had to turn things around, to change the course of history as it was unfolding, was to violently expel the Whitman. The Whitman Massacre completely changed the relationship between whites and Indians. The massacre also created tension throughout other missions in the Oregon Territory. This resulted in the closing of most Western missions. In future years, the Cayuse were forced onto reservations, which left an unforgettable mark on present-day Washington.